Welcome everybody to the MusicWise Minisode with your hosts, Rona and Bindu. A lot of times people are just sort of overthinking, like, how should I be in the world? You know? <laughs> it's like, it's like, who cares? Just be yourself. Seriously, that is what is going to attract people. In these minisodes, we will be speaking about music marketing with my friend Dory Clark, who is a branding expert and author of bestsellers Reinventing You and Stand Out. She's also penned hundreds of articles for Harvard Business Review, Time Magazine, and Entrepreneur. Time, time and time again, watching all the trends, trying to make a way around this thing that never ends. Learn the changing times, ready to take the ride. Stay true to you while you are music wise, music wise, music wise, music wise. Dory. Congratulations on all of your success. I just wanted to say that. I'm very impressed with the things you've been able to uh, accomplish. And, you know, just even coming out the blocks, that was one of the things we were talking about yeah. before we got on. I was like, I want to know about Dory in the sense of what she feels her, maybe her top three uh, personality traits are or skills that you have that have afforded you the amount of success in different areas that you've experienced. Well, thanks. Okay, my persona my big three personality traits. Well, I think I think probably the um, the the most salient one is uh, is just that I am an incredibly persistent person because I, you know, like like everybody, uh, have been turned down a million times for things, and I think a lot of times people just somehow have uh, have an external locus of control and they assume that other people are able to render a definitive judgment on their talents. And I have ge just generally instead been like, why do these stupid people not get it? Okay, I'm going to show them. <laughs> and I just keep going until yeah. I show them. And, um, and I remember all their names. I remember all yeah. their names, <laughs> and and eventually awesome. they will learn. <laughs> and, and you know so, where they live. <laughs> that's right. I love it. Okay, so persistence is key. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I think I think honestly, another thing that has been useful for me, and I, I think you you probably find this with a with a lot of people as well, is that sometimes you, you need to have, um, a little bit of a, a driver toward ambition, because if people, if people are, are sometimes, uh, in a situation where just, you know, everything's, everything's fine, then there's not really a compelling reason for them to make the extra effort that's necessary to really push forward and, you know, it varies from person to person what that external driver is. You know, it could be that they're, you know, growing up, their family didn't have enough money and they're like, I'm, I'm going to make that money. Or right. it could be that they felt like an outsider in some way or just some, some factor that is driving them to make different choices than what the average choice is. Right. But for me, uh, you know, I grew up in this small town in North Carolina and I always hated it. I thought it was just a really culturally vacuous place, but it became even worse for me when I was a teenager and I realized I was gay and I'm just like, I have got to get out of here. And so I, I literally had three different strategies. I had an A, B, and C plan for how I could leave home early and, uh, and be able to wow. just kind of get on with my life. And so fortunately my A plan worked, which was being able to go to college early. And that was great. Um, but I, I think that for a lot of my classmates, I mean, growing up there was fine. It was a fine thing, you know, in, in the sort of standard majority. Um, and I, I think that they didn't necessarily feel the same immediate need as me to, uh, to get out and do something different. Okay. Wow. Okay. So persistence and having an external driver, something that uh, a really strong enough why you're doing what you're doing so that you yeah. keep up. Yeah. Okay. Great, 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 great. Yeah. There's great. that famous quote, which I, I forget 
I forget who, who said it, um, I guess in, in American life, whenever we don't know who said a quote, it's either uh, Will Rogers, Mark Twain, or Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Probably none right, of them, right. but, uh, but the, the great quote that says, a strong enough why can sustain any how. And I love that. That's right. That's right. Could it be also like an internal driver? Like, like knowing intrinsically that you're destined to do something else, to be somewhere else? Yeah, I think I think absolutely there um, there can be there can be aspects of that as well. Um, you know what I've what I've found actually, which I think is a, is a surprising for me uh, because I feel like I have a you know reasonable sense of self confidence. But going out and doing a, a book tour around Stand Out, I especially came to realize just from the questions that people asked and the conversations that we had. There is like a self-esteem crisis out there. It's crazy to me the percentage of people that literally just take themselves out of contention and they they look at like a title like stand out and they're just like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And it's like, really? Like, what is your problem? Of course you can do that. Of course you can do that. You know, there's there's specific tactics and strategies you can use and maybe you need to learn some skills to, you know, to get you to the place where you can execute on them, but it is absolutely not some, you know, elite thing that only a few people can do. Anyone can do it if they're just willing to put in the work and put and put their efforts in a strategic direction rather than in a, you know, scattershot direction. But a, a lot of people really don't seem to to think that's the case, which I find very sad. Well, I actually run across that uh, as a personal power coach. A lot of people do take themselves out of contention. They're afraid of success. They're afraid of who they will have to become in order to maintain it. Um, you know, what's, you know, what's possible for them. They don't want to get out there and fail either. You know what I mean? They're just afraid. So they just kind of stay in the comfort zone and, and that works because you're just getting by. And like you said earlier, I think if you don't have something that's really pushing you, you're not going to want to get out of your comfort zone to go get it. It's just yeah. like, mm. why do it, you know? So, wow. Yeah. And it's probably like a lot of internal voices that say, but like, oh yeah, but you can't do this. I mean, they can do it, but you know, you don't deserve it. And then you don't do it. Yeah. yeah. How did, yeah. how did you guys learn to seize your personal power? What did, what did that look like for you? Uh. <laughs> um, for me, it's, I mean, I could definitely relate to the persistence part. Um, I write people emails and say like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? But usually you get a very nice answer from people. And that's how, you know, you get to know a lot of people and your mindset and your um, environment becomes bigger. Um, and internal driver, definitely also. It's, it's, it's like for me, it was, and that's why I was also asking, is like knowing that there is, there's more that I can do, more that I could achieve. Um, and, and probably also from hearing as a child of not good enough and thinking like, I can do better and I can be good enough, but, but I will decide what is good enough for me and not someone else. Yeah. And for you, Rana? Amen. Yeah. what did you say, babe? And, and for you, what was it for you? Oh, for, I mean, I, I, it was intrinsic for me initially, as far as being an entertainer is concerned, is something I knew I wanted. And there wasn't enough doubt planted in me at an early age to tell me I couldn't have it, even though I was totally insecure, skinny, big eyes, didn't have what maybe somebody would say the looks were to come up, you know, in the industry where it was very out of referred. Uh, but because I had this strong desire within, I went after it. But for coaching, it took my back to be against the wall and me have to go back to my own foundation and say, what the heck did I do? Mm. How, what choices did I make to get me where I am? Am I, as you have written a book about reinventing myself and my willing, and I remember telling myself, I said, I am not willing to be unhappy. Like I, I, I have to find something of purpose and I have to be happy. So how do I find it? And that sent me on my search. So I had a burning enough desire for both, but from different places, I would say. That's great. I love that. Yeah. So, all yeah. right, dang, we just got to know each other a little bit better. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really good. Music wise. 
if folks are interested in learning more about how to develop their own personal brand and share it with the world, I have a, a free resource. It is a 42 page free self-assessment workbook that folks can download from my website, which is doryclark.com. It's D-O-R-I-E-C-L-A-R-K.com. Uh, I also have more than 400 free articles available on the website as well. Uh, so folks can really dive in. My books are called Reinventing You and Stand Out. And I am on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Dory Clark and LinkedIn too. <laughs> so uh, if folks want to get in touch. Yes. And you forget your awesome newsletter as well. Yes. Yes, exactly. If, if uh, you know, folks can sign up for that uh, at DoryClark.com. <laughs>